Well, let's turn to Acts 7. <clears throat> and we want to hear from Stephen. So who, who knows what the name Stephen means? Raise your hand if you know what his name means. Anybody? Okay. Uh, let's see. Kelly, who does, what does it mean? <clears throat> All right. So the spotlight's going to be tonight on Abraham. And I want to, <clears throat> what I want to do is um, I want to explain last week when I was talking about uh, parents and this and that. Um, and sometimes it can sound like, where, where's that coming from? You know what I mean? That's way out in left field from what you've been sharing and everything. And I want to show you where it came from. And I want to show you uh, how Stephen is bringing forth something very important because Abraham is the first one he starts talking about. And, uh, and there are elements. Some of you, because of prior teaching or your own searching, have heard some of the things I'm going to share. But I think there's some things seen in light of Stephen and what he's trying to communicate that will be even, even more, if you will. <clears throat> All right, so we're in Acts 7, and we're just going to read verse uh, 2 through 4. <clears throat> and he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. Before he dealt in, and I'm just going to use the regular word that it uses in the Old Testament, Haran, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into a, the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran, and from thence, when his father was dead, he moved him into this land wherein ye now dwell, this land being talking about now Israel. All right. Um, it mentions these names, or these places, and these names, okay? The Ur of the Chaldees, uh, and if we put that like on a map, and it's not, if you actually had a regular map, it wouldn't be a straight line going like this. But I'm just trying to see a flow. <clears throat> the Ur of Chaldees, which is also known as, later on, Okay, so I'll give, I'll give that place a B for, for Babylon. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> okay, so then he goes to Haran, and then he talks about the promised land. And, of course, the promised land is, uh, well, it's the best place, right, on here. Babylon, Haran, the promised land. In fact, it's, here's how good it is. It's just like... going to prom. It's the best. <laughs> Except I never got to go to mine, but anyway. So there's this flow, and, they, and these, these three names which have various names. For example, another name for Ur of Chaldees used here is Mesopotamia. It has have a whole bunch of names, but it's basically these three things that are reduced down into three Verses, all of them within that scope. <clears throat> so when we look at it from uh, where he's talking about, because he's talking about a trail, God appeared to Abraham in the Ur of Chaldees, Babylon. This was his home, Mesopotamia. This was his home. And this is where he was born. And this is where he was raised up to that point. But God appeared to him. And he went down to Haran. So that's a whole nother country from Babylon. Okay? And then from there, he's, you know, we're, we haven't gotten into that part. But from there, he goes into the promised land. And that's a whole different country. And it's a movement that's taking place here. But it's a God-ordered movement. Abraham is just not going on vacation. Abraham is not deciding to take, take a trip. Abraham 
while he was here in the Arab Chaldees, God spoke to him there. Okay. So that there's a little bit to say about the fact that no matter how bad the place is that you're in, God can speak to you there. Some of you know that for sure. <laughs> and, and thank God. I mean, because <clears throat> the soundings <clears throat> are telling us something else. Things feel, and this thing's going in and out, and so am I. <laughs> see, see this, you see this, this will get you in trouble. This stuff. Don't do what I do. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so, um, so with that in mind, I just read what Stephen said, but I want to read it again now, and I want you to think about these three sections, and this being the basic life of Abraham. Okay? All right. Acts 7, verse 2 through 4. <clears throat> And this is, this is uh, Stephen speaking. And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The gl God of glory appeared unto our father, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, which is Babylon, which is the Ur of Chaldees, before he dwelt. Okay, so he appeared to him here in Mesopotamia, in the Ur of Chaldees, before he ever dwelt in Haran. <clears throat> um, and said unto him, get thee out of thy country. Get out of this country. Okay? Unto a land, to the land which I shall show thee, which is the promised land. Leave this and go make this trek to be with me where I want you. Okay? <clears throat> Sounds so simple. Hmm. So, uh, and then, <clears throat> uh, from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Haran, and from thence, or from there, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. <clears throat> All right. So is this a history lesson that, that uh, Stephen, who is a young guy, who is not an elder, he's not a, um, uh, I don't know, an apostle. He's not, he's not a big shot. He, he waits on tables. This is his job. He was anointed for it. He was. He was anointed for it. To do this job. And so he starts with these words. And, and the crowd is basically, the high priest is the one who asks him, you know, talk. So he's, this is the beginning of the response to the high priest. But there's all the, there's the, didn't we talk about this? There's the, uh, the, the chief of police that's in the temple, guarding the temple. Uh, that's not the word it uses. But there's all of the priests and all of the religious people and Pharisees. In fact, there's, there's one particular Pharisee there named Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, who is not yet Paul. He's there. <clears throat> and sometimes we forget that. And when he says these words... I'm sure that they're all going, we know this. This is common knowledge. This is, this is baby stuff, you know? <clears throat> so, um, so I wanna, I wanna just give you a little background now of this portion of the story. Uh, the, the father, and, and again, you know this too. So you can sit there and as I do it, you can go, we know this. 
but I think there's maybe some things we haven't really grasped in the process. <clears throat> um, in, uh, what is it, Genesis, I thought I marked that down. Yeah, Genesis 11. And verse 26. <clears throat> and what we're going to get here is we're going to get some of the same things that Stephen said way, way into the future. <clears throat> and Terah lived 70 years, and he begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. So Terah is Abraham's father. And Nahor is Abraham's brother. And Haran is, ne is uh, Abraham's other brother. <clears throat> now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. Y'all remember Lot? And Haran died before his father, Terah, in the land of his nativity in the Ur of the Chaldees. Okay, so God has spoken to Abraham up here. But also up here before probably, well, yeah, absolutely. Before God spoke to Abraham, Terah had three sons and Abraham was one of them. His name was actually Abram. But God changed it to Abraham, and we went over that for reasons. Okay, but then Haran dies. He dies. And so they come down to Haran. So <clears throat> that's verse 28. And Haran died before his father. He died before his father. That could be taken several different ways. It could be he, he beat him to death. You know what I mean? <laughs> you like my wording? Uh, or it could be his father was with him when he died. In, in Babylon, in the Ur of Chaldees. <clears throat> so uh, I wrote, apparently Terah gave birth to three sons, all while he was 70 years old. And that's verse 26. <clears throat> and while still living in the Ur of Chaldees. Okay? Notice that of the sons, Haran was mentioned three times, but the other sons, including Abraham, were only mentioned twice. Now, if that, you know, that seems self evident in a certain sense, but not really, because there's going to be an emphasis on Haran. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so um, in Genesis 11, uh, 32, um, and the days of Terah, and I'm just skipping a little bit here, and the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. And he, he lived to be 205 years. Terah died Terah, the father of Abraham, the father of Nahor, the father of, you know, he died in Haran. Okay. Now, all of this, if you see, I took, the, I know it's not a great chart, but I took the time to show this because there is an importance in this because basically all what we're talking about up to this point is what Stephen said. And Stephen's not just a historian. He's got a point to make from the very beginning that's going to filter down to everything. And he talks for a while, doesn't he? You know, maybe he's just full of the Lord and maybe he's just trying to you know, bide time so they don't kill him. I don't know, you know. <laughs> oh, remember, there's another story. <laughs> I'm sure that's not it, but anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, so, it seems that Terah really loved his son Haran. 
because he named the place that they stayed before entering the promised land after him and didn't want to leave it. Terah, in all of that journey, never made it to the promised land. He died in Haran, which to me, the fact that Haran's being mentioned more, that he names the place Haran, the father does, he, uh, um, he dies where his son, you know, died as it were. So there's, there's a connection here with Haran. All right, so <clears throat> let's see, did I finish reading that? Well, here's some of the things I just said. It seems that Terah really loved his son Haran because he named the place they stayed before entering the promised land after him and didn't want to leave it. Another reason may be that Abraham had no progenitor, meaning child, had no, Abraham had no progenitor, but Haran had Lot. So I said, Abraham had nothing and Haran had a lot. <laughs> All right. These things actually come to me while the Spirit of God is giving me this stuff. <laughs> it really does. I'm sure he's looking down and going, Randy, don't say that. <laughs> stop, stop tweaking the buttons when I'm going to the bathroom. Anyway. <clears throat> um, so... I want, to, I want to talk about the call of Abraham now. The call of Abraham. And I'll read it, but I want to know that when I'm left-handed, it doesn't work. Anyway, I want, you, I want you to know that nowhere in chapter 11 does it put down the call of God on Abraham's life. That happens in chapter 12. Okay, now this is all really important because, because it depends on where you're at in the, in the uh, uh, place. So now we're going to go to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. <clears throat> and I call this a tale of two chapters, chapter 11 and chapter 12 of Genesis. A tale of two chapters. Because if you never notice that, then you've always assumed that the call to Abraham happened in chapter 11 because all the events that it's talking about later, I, I can just read this, what I wrote to show you this. Later is stuff that happened after the call. All right. So this is, this is chapter 11 now. <clears throat> Genesis 12, yeah. Now the Lord had said, the words had said, what, what uh, past tense. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Okay, so Stephen, you know, he, he knows his Bible. But we have to see that there are events that happen in chapter 11 that were actually happening after what it's mentioning here. Abraham first heard from God. So let's paint it on the, on the board here. Ur of Chaldees, Babylon. <clears throat> Abraham heard from God here before they made a trek down to Haran. Okay. But Genesis 11 doesn't give us that story. It doesn't come until chapter 12. All right. So, from uh, Genesis 12, 1, it appears that God had spoken to Abraham prior to chapter 12 and prior to some of the events in chapter 11. All right. So, we read, we're going back now. This is a tale of two chapters, okay? Uh, we're going to go back to chapter 11 again, and I want you to think about Abraham's call here 
and then the events that start taking place after that. <clears throat> this is, again, Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 and 32. And Terah, his father, right? That's his father's name. And Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah, uh, his, uh, his daughter-in-law, his, his son Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from the Ur of Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came into Haran and dwelt there. Verse 32, and the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Okay, so that's given us some new information. That's given us information. Okay, so, so one of the most obvious that will be important to notice is the first three words that I read, or first four words, and Terah, his father, took Abraham out of, out of Babylon down into Haran. Does that sound contrary? Does that sound like something amiss here? Thank God for Lindsay. Thank you. You want to come explain it to him? <laughs> well, so, you know, it's always like a, you say some st things like this and you get these looks, you know, like a, a calf looking at a new gate, you know, it's like, where did that come from? <laughs> Anyway, sorry, my tech, sorry for my Texan. Okay. Um, so, so from Genesis 12, 1, we realize that God had only spoken to Abraham about leaving the Ur of Chaldees and going to the promised land, right? God had only spoken. He didn't speak to Terah. In fact, how did I write that? Um, <clears throat> uh, and no record of his father, Terah, ever hearing from God on any level. But to Abraham, God clearly told him to leave his father's house and go to a land that he would show him. Right? So then, anybody have a question? I have it. Then why is Terah being the one who's taking his son down. Okay. So, uh, in light of that, let's reread Genesis 11, uh, 11, 31. And Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, and his son's, Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur to the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, to go into the land of Canaan. Terah is in charge. The father is in charge. But, but into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Okay, so Abraham hears from God he probably tells his father, probably tells his family. Who knows how much time passed, because Terah lived to be 205 or something like that, <laughs> anyway. Um, and so after a while, Terah takes him down to Haran, and he stops there. He stops there. The promised land has not been breached, if you will, in a good way, yet. Hadn't got there. You, they're stuck. They're stuck. And I believe they're stuck because Abraham named this place after his son and didn't want him to leave the son that died. And there, uh, I've shown you already some things that would back that up. <clears throat> so... Um, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. <clears throat> so my writings. But in verse 31, chapter 11, it wasn't Abraham obeying God, but Terah who took them from Ur of Chaldees 
It wasn't Abraham obeying God. All right, you say, what does all this have to do with anything? It has to do with what, what Stephen's going to tell you about this story. That's what it has to do with. Stephen's going to say something that's going to really make them mad. And he's going to point out stuff, just like I'm doing here. <laughs> he's going to point out stuff. Wait a minute. Y'all aren't, aren't Pharisees, are you? <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> or I'll be just like that song that she just sang. <laughs> I'll be still. I want to be still. <laughs> okay, I was kidding. <laughs> anyway, so... So, you know, we, we miss so much. And what's kind of interesting here is that Stephen is speaking to the religious elite all the way up to the high priest himself of things that they never really considered. And he's not through with Abraham. I mean, not through with only Abraham. He's going to keep moving. He's going to keep showing the scriptures as they are instead of as they were read by religious people. You with me? Yeah. Amen. Well, the bottom line is what? We want to hear from God. You know, it's easy, to, it's easy to read the Bible and say, oh, I remember one time Randy or somebody else preached on that and, you know, it's a good sermon and whatever. Good sermons is not what God's trying to impart to us. He's trying to impart his heart. He's trying to impart his view. He's trying to impart, it's so much so, this, this song that as he sang, trying to impart his pattern, his way, his, he's trying to bring forth something that's connected and alive and not just a bunch of religious people that know that can spew scriptures and, and do so wrongly, if you can say it like that. Not, not really giving, just, just kind of making a story out of it instead of seeing what the real issues are that God sees. So... Um, so in verse 31 says that when they left the Ur of Chaldees, the destination was meant to be Canaan, right? It was meant to be Canaan. Even with Terah taking them, you know, he, he must have agreed and said, yeah, let's do it. I'll lead. I'm the dad. Okay. Well, I had a dad and he, his lead, he led, but it wasn't so good. No. Let's hear from God. Let's hear from God. Verse 31 says that when they left the Ur of Chaldees, the destination was meant to be Canaan, not Haran. Haran, his son, was so important to Terah that he named it after him and wanted to stay there and did stay there and did die there. So if Terah really had heard from God, and again, there is no place in the Bible that says he ever heard from God or ever had any kind of contact with God, um, then he would have pressed on, or at least should have pressed on. But he didn't. He stayed there. Okay. So, um, let's, let's read some now out of the uh, book of Acts uh, chapter uh, seven, a little more of the scriptures. <clears throat> there's, up to what I've just said to you, there's one supposedly obvious reality that you should have come to, or that you should have noticed that, oh, did anybody notice an O? Oh? Yes. And what was it? Who shouldn't have? Sarah. Greater, there's something greater than that. But Abraham was led by his dad until he was 
Okay, so so let's let's shorten that. But yes, yes, let's shorten it. Abraham shouldn't have stayed there all that long, right? Abraham shouldn't have stayed there that long. And why? Mallory just told us why. Because he was following his dad, not his dad. May I point up to the Heavenly Father? To the Father that's trying to lead us into something. And he's listening to his dad. And that's causing him to miss what's really there. Okay, we're not finished. We're not finished. And don't anybody say any scriptures in advance of this. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't trust you. <laughs> All right. Acts chapter 7, verse uh, 2 through 7. And he said, this is Stephen. And he said, men and brethren, fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran and said unto him, get thee out of thy country. So this is the real father speaking, not Terah. Okay, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I will show you. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, now he's ready to, to follow, follow the other father. You, you see it? Yes. So, okay. So I know you're assuming that I have a, a, a horse to whip, uh, some, something that I uh, have stuck in my craw about this or that. I don't. This is, and we, and we still haven't hit the nail on the head yet here. This is Acts 7. I didn't, I didn't really choose to do this book in the first place. And God is enlightening my eyes to Stephen. Things that I didn't see before. So let's, let's, look, let's look up some more. Then came he... Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to read verse 4 again. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran, and from thence... When his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. This is Stephen talking to these Pharisees. And he gave him non-inheritance in the land wherein you, ye now dwell. And he gave... Um, uh, in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him when he as yet had no child. Okay, so I, I read the whole thing. Now I want to just connect two verses that are already connected. And I want you to listen and tell me if there's not a real connection here. Okay, this is... This is um, um, this is verse, this is verse 4 again. <clears throat> then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. And now connecting the very next verse. And he gave him none or no inheritance in it. Didn't, I mean, I, I knew that for a long time, but did you know that? That he, no, not, not any place that he put his foot. I'm just giving you one example. I mean, when he goes down into to Egypt uh, and, then, and then actually goes up over to where uh, Hebron is, he buys a plot of land for burial for his family, right? He paid for it. God didn't give it to him and then say, everybody else, stay away. 
He paid for it. God never gave him the inheritance up to that point. Now, we will continue after this class to read what Stephen has to say about it and the progression of it, but it must be understood or you won't understand anything that Stephen's trying to talk about. You must understand what happened here. And what happened here in this case was Abraham's father kept him back from going and reaching the place that God wanted him to do and still cut it short. Now, I'm not even going to say, I'm not going to say something to give you hope right now because <laughs> that's, that's the Holy Spirit. And we'll get into that next. But you have to understand that God is our Father and that we're not just listening to a God somewhere up there and we're not just involved with our, the, uh, the supreme being. Oh, the supreme being told me to come and do this and that. No, this is God our Father and this is Jesus our life and this is the Holy Spirit whose one main job is to open this kind of stuff up to us so that we can see His heart and the way the scriptures are written in his eyes, and in so doing, follow him. And, and, and in truth, I'll just tell you, uh, personally, Abraham never did possess the land, but he, but he did, but he didn't. <laughs> but personally, he didn't. Would he, had he shot straight down? Would he? Have he heard from God and said, let's do it and go down here to the promised land? And so let's, he'd have, he'd have come. He wouldn't have spent all that time in Haran. He wouldn't have spent all that time messing with the, the stuff that, you know, <clears throat> that, that Haran was about. He would have gone all the way with the Lord. You ever heard that term before? Go all the way with the Lord. <clears throat> well, this is not a... So, so Stephen is not uh, trying to discourage the high priest and the Pharisees and the other priests. He's not trying to discourage them and them go, what? You know? So is it possible that we won't? You know, like the high priest is going, huh? You mean I'm not going to enter in? He's not trying to discourage him. He's trying to show him that this is just the way that this story is. God is this way. And he's saying, look, when you stopped, when you started fooling around with those areas, then you quit your journey. You quit your journey. And when you got ready on the basis of some other thing than me and my calling and my hope for your life and what I want to do, you, you'll, never, you'll never experience that in that way. Is, is Abraham one of the greatest men of the Bible? Yes. yes. Is he, uh, is the, the story, does it end with the cross, with him offering his son? What do you think of that? He's sitting there going, God says, you know, offer up your son. And he's going, I am not going to hold back. My dad did that to me, and I'm not going to do that. I am going to offer my son on this altar. And son, we're going all the way. Amen. <clears throat> and you should read it. He raises that knife with, with Isaac, you know, laying on the altar. And God said, hold up. He says, now I know. I'll let you read the rest of it. 
huge. Now I know. Now I know about you. Everything back to where it should be. <laughs> All right. I think that's, that's a good stopping place right there. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. This is so good. Even while I'm looking, the Holy Spirit's just showing me how this is all attached so much to what Stephen is saying and where he's going, and he's going to blow them out of the water with the truth. And it's going to be alive, and he's not going to be gloating over knowing more than they do, and he's not going to be gloating over, well, you're just jealous, or da-da-da-da. He is with the Lord so much so <clears throat> that he goes into that death. and becomes the first ripe fruits of the New Testament. Going up to the Lord. We just thank you for the heart that you had in Stephen to put these things down for us, and there's so much more. To put them down in each story, each one, each portion having its own piece to the puzzle. Masterfully by the Holy Spirit through Stephen being laid forth for our, not just our eyes, for our hearts. That we might see as Stephen sees. That we might see that we might see as Stephen sees. And in so doing, lay down our life. Lay down our life for your glory. The God of glory said to Abraham. So Father, enrich us with more of the gold that is Jesus. Enrich us with the life of Jesus. And may these classes not be teachings, but may we hunger and thirst. May we pant after you, the living God, as a deer would pant. And you said, Jesus, you said, seek and you'll find. You were trying to show us how, how very sold out you are to those who are just going after your son. If we seek, we'll find. So Father, may we not seek the, the testimony of the Pharisees and their version, but may we seek from the only ones who were there at the time, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Explain these verses to us in Jesus' name. Amen.